Okay, everybody, let's talk about the new project. We have a vanity. It also has a mirror. We take the mirrors out for transport, but it's got a big mirror that goes in here and it is not broken. It's got this kind of hardware and all of the hardware is with it. It's got a little stool that has a lot of veneer lift. The drawers are pretty clean. We'll clean them up a little bit and then we'll get them moving a bit better. As far as the finish goes, we've done a lot of pieces like this that are faux bois finish. And you can usually tell it pretty easily. But as you can see, this one is lost a lot of its finish. So we're going to be taking that off. So let's get it cleaned up, get it washed down, and let's get started. All right, we've got this piece all cleaned up. Now let's get this, this old finish off. Now it's time to do these details here. And the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna get out the hide scraper. I use this all the time. A lot of you will be familiar with it. It's a scraper, comes with a lot of different adapters on it, with it. And that way we can just get into those small areas like that. I would say out of all of the tools that I have, this is probably my my most used and that's even with my paint sprayer i mean i use these all the time if you don't have a set please check them out we'll put a link in the description because they are so useful now for these little moldings i need them off because i need to scrape this um as you can see it's uh, not in great shape, so we're going to go ahead and remove these and get that all cleaned up and scraped off. should be able to just put my knife under here and just gently keep prying and they'll come up. I'd rather not break them because I don't know if I'm going to reuse them, but I just need to be gentle. First one's always the hardest. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. I don't know that this one's gonna come out whole. Although I think it had a crack in it before. I think they're a composite material rather than a wood, but so we can put it back together. Yeah, a composite material. All right, we are gonna save them because we can reuse them if we want to. Now I gotta get all these little nail heads out. Now that we've got all of the old shellac and faux bois painting off of this, I'm just gonna sand down and, not sand down, but scuff sand the sides. I've already scuff sanded the drawers off camera and we want to do that just to give some adhesive a bite because we're going to use this paintable wallpaper and give this a bit more of an updated design. So let's get started. Now we're just going to get a tack rag and get the rest of the dust off of this. And then we're going to do the same thing to the other side as well.
tack rags are a great way to get off all of the sanding dust so that you don't have dust particles in the corners when you paint something because if you do have dust particles or dirt there what's going to happen is when that dirt lets loose your paint's going to start chipping so you want to be sure to get all of it off now it's time to put a little design on this vanity and just bring it up to date just a bit so what i've done is i've got some paintable wallpaper here and i know that on my side i need it 17 inches long and i want my design to go this direction long ways not sideways so i've just made some marks and i'm just gonna take my ruler and just give me 17 inches there and we'll cut it there all right now let's see how it fits we should be about a quarter inch um, off in each direction and that looks about right we're about a quarter inch too big in both directions so that's about perfect okay now we can properly cut it to size just i just wanted to be sure that i was right and it looks like i am so we go back recut this and then we will put it on there okay let's see how we fit Just a little bit long, I think, but that's okay. It's always better that it be a little bit long than a little bit short, because that's annoying. But the width is really good. Let's talk about adhesive. There are a lot of things that you can use to put this down with. A lot of people will use it, but I do not use wallpaper adhesive. Wallpaper adhesive is for walls. Wood does not act the same as walls. Walls have plaster or they will have drywall, but wallpaper adhesive I do not find is a good adhesive for doing paintable wallpaper on furniture. So what I use is this product and it is from Artsyville and it is an adhesive it is a foil adhesive but i love this adhesive for so many different projects um, and if i can find a product that i can use for more than just what i bought it for then to me that that's a money saver so I use that for pretty much everything that has to be adhesed unless it's a molding and then, you know, that's a E6000 or, you know, epoxy. But we're going to use the Artsyville foil adhesive. We'll put a link in the description. I absolutely love it. It's water soluble, so you can just wash out brushes or whatever you use. Um, you can roll it. If you're doing a large area, you can roll it on. And if you give it about a half hour, it gets a bit tacky. And once it's tacky, it stays tacky until you clean it off or, you know, top coat or what have you. But it will stay tacky so you don't have to worry that it's drying too fast. All right, so we've got our adhesive. And if you think you want this a little bit thinner, just get a little bit of water on your brush. And I'm gonna get the corners and the edges with a brush. Now I could do this a bit faster and be a bit sloppier, but I really hate doing cleanup. I'd rather just take my time and be very precise as opposed to doing cleanup after. We'll put a link for this in the description. I do highly recommend this. I absolutely love this. Also, 
that company has some of the best foils. If you're into doing crafts, um, whether it be doing furniture or making Christmas ornaments or whatever, if you need foils, they, they absolutely are the place to go. Okay, now that I've got the edges done, I'm gonna go back with a roller and do the middle. All right, we're just gonna give that a few minutes to get tacky and then we will come back and put our paper down. It's all dry now, or it's all tacky. So now we're ready to put our paper on. Once you get one edge down, it's not so bad. Everything just kind of falls into place then. I'm gonna get my Bondo scraper here because that lets me really push that down in there and then just work to the edges, getting those air bubbles out. All down, nice and solid, no air bubbles. There we go. Got a little bit of a piece to cut right here, but I can live with that. All right, I have filled the holes for the hardware because we are not gonna use that hardware. Um, what we're gonna do is we are gonna see that that hardware makes it to someone who is doing a full restoration of an Art Deco piece. Um, because it is hard to find Art Deco hardware that is um, original. You can get reproductions, but um, as we're changing the look and we're not doing a full restoration, I will either save that hardware to use on a full restoration or see that it makes its way to someone who is doing a full restoration so just putting the adhesive on i've already cut the wallpaper to size for these drawers so we'll get that put on and we're doing it just i did it exactly the same way that i did the side pieces one other important thing to remember when you are doing wallpaper on a flat surface and you oversize it like I've done here the easy thing to do to be sure you've got nice clean edges is just take your your sanding pad and just run it across all the edges this will then let you just tear that wallpaper your wallpaper goes all the way to the edge and it's nice and clean As easy as that and you've got a nice clean edge every time when you have a flat surface now that we've got wallpaper on all of our drawer fronts we've got it on our side on the sides of our vanity I've got the vanity upside down right now in the paint room because I want to be sure that when I paint this piece I get this inside painted as well because I just don't like looking in there and seeing unpainted surface. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to spray the inside of this first, then I'll flip it back up and then we'll paint the whole thing. So let's get started. All right, now that our wallpaper's on, let's go ahead and get some color on this. All right, when you put that first coat on, 
sometimes with wallpaper, it's going to look like this. It's going to look like, oh my God, what is in my paint? What's going on here? This is not working. But trust me, trust the process and by the third coat, they'll look great. See, third coat, it looks absolutely fantastic. So we're going to get the rest of them done and then we'll move on to the next step. Still got this piece upside down, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to paint the sides and get this front painted as well. I've already painted the other side, but I'm going to go ahead and get this side now. Now, although this looks like a mess, by the third coat, it will be absolutely beautiful. Trust that process and just keep going. Okay, so we're back in the paint shop. We've gotten, um, I think, two coats on the sides and the front of this piece. They'll need another coat, but they look pretty good. And I've gone through with a very, very soft 220 and just given everything a nice sand in between those coats just to be sure that whenever I get done, everything is nice and smooth. You want to be sure to do that. If not, you're going to end up with it feeling like it'll feel like sandpaper. So give it a coat, wait for it to dry, sand it give it its next coat after you've dusted down with that tack rag. Okay, I've decided that I want stripes across this waterfall part on this um, vanity. So what I've done, or the way that I do it, is I measure the space that I'm going to be putting the stripes in, which is 10 inches. I put me a mark halfway. So I've got a mark at five. I know that my tape is a half inch wide, so I'm gonna put a mark at five and a half and a mark at four and a half. And that will be where my first piece of tape is gonna go. That ensures that my stripes then will be the exact distance from here and here. So if I end up with a half stripe here, I should end up with a half stripe here as well on this end. I mark both top and bottom just to be sure that my first piece of tape is absolutely straight. And then that should um, carry through with the rest of the lines. So my first piece of tape. <coughs> Just gonna get my taping knife here to be sure that my lines are nice and tight and make sure that we're lined up on the bottom as well it's hard to see those marks on black but and then if you just use your tape as your measurement then you can just do that Take off every other piece of tape. I'm also going to tape that to be sure that I don't get any on that piece, any of the contrasting color. Now I do a lot of black and gold, but this time we're going to do something a bit different. We're going black and silver. What I want to do now, though, is I want to be sure that my silver doesn't bleed under my tape. I'm going to show you how I do that. Now, you can use the color of your base piece. So, I could use black to do this as well. But, I just do it with 
the top coat that I'm going to be using. Um, for me, that's just the way that I do it. But you could you you could do the same thing by using your base color, so the black. All you're doing is ensuring that any bleed through that's going to go up under that tape is either going to be the same color as your base coat or just your clear top coat, just depending on whichever you use. We're just going to let that dry, and I might even do another coat just to be sure I've got it covered. All right, now that our top coat is dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take a bit of rub and buff and silver, and I'm going to make those lines on here now. Just like this. And remember, it's always best practice to um, be sure that you top coat a piece before you do waxes. And the reason for that is that you have more control. So if anything goes wrong and you want to take that off, all you've got to do is take a little bit of mineral spirits and you can fix those mistakes. Okay, we'll just let that sit and then we'll remove that tape. I'm going to do the other side, then we'll go move on to the next part. Okay, I need to put some gilding wax on these moldings. And what I've done is I've just put a little bit on a plastic bag. And then I've folded it over to make it nice and thin. I've got one of these round um, sponge rollers. And it's got a little flat end on it. And this one's been used several times. I've put the adhesive on that I used to put the wallpaper on. And I'm just going to take that and without putting any pressure, just come across those lines. And it gives me a nice straight line like I'm looking for. And I can cover areas quite quickly like this. And then if I were to do that with my finger, it would go deeper into these, these edges. And I don't want that. I want it nice and flat. Just like that. I want it to look like there's light hitting it all the time. depending on how much pressure I put on this, I can get that line a little bit thicker than, than that. And then you can just barely see that there's some silver there, which looks quite elegant. I don't want it too over because it also still has moldings that go here. And I think that'll just make that pop a bit. I've ordered this redesign with Prima Transfer. It's a Harlequin design and it is in silver. And we're gonna put that on the top of this beautiful, and I mean it's coming out so beautiful, um, vanity. So let's get started doing that. Let me show you how I do that. Like I say, this comes from Redesign with Prima. We will put a link in the description for everything that we use in the video. Please remember that if you hit that link and buy, um, we get a small portion of the proceeds, but it costs you no more. It's just a way to help support the channel. They come with this little stick to help you put it on. And this one comes in two sheets. Like more than that to me. Okay, what I'm doing now is I am 
I'm cutting this down to size. Now this part for, for this transfer is not important to you because every transfer is going to be different. Um, and every size is going to be different. And then I cut out the white around my design. And the design stops quite a ways from the actual end of the paper. This happens to be an absolute perfect fit from side to side on the top of this vanity piece. I got so fortunate there. All right, now, at this point, you want to be very cautious because if your paper folds in on itself, you're, it's, it's, it's a mess. And sometimes you can't recover from that. So be very cautious at this point. And just start lining it up properly. And then take your stick and just start pressing down. Now, to be quite honest, I have found that temperature in your shop will make this process take longer or speed it up. Once you get it started though, it's usually pretty easy going after that. Now, once you do get your stencil down, take your finger and just go back over all of it to be sure that everything is down properly. Another way you can brandish it is to just take your your paper from your, your stencil, the not shiny side, and just go over all of it to be sure that everything is down. See like that little white line there that's... You can see that it's a stencil. What you're looking to do is try and take those away. They call it a halo. So if you want to just take that halo away, everything will look like it's just hand painted on. Now before you put on a stencil, your paint needs to be on and dry properly. Um, they recommend at least 24 to 48 hours to prop for paint to be properly cured. That's gonna depend on your manufacturer and what they recommend as your cure time. But that's something you don't want to rush or you'll mess up your paint job and your, your transfer at the same time. I got a bit in a rush putting this side of the transfer on and it has some flaws and mistakes. So I'm gonna show you how you can fix those. There's two ways you can fix it. If it's say a flower design and you you had accidents on that, that's pretty easy to fix. You just mix up your paint and just fill in. On this though, I think it might be hard to match that color and sheen. So I've got a little bit of the transfer left and I'm gonna use that to repair these issues. As I did rush the process, it's now going to cost me time instead. So the first thing I'm going to do is take just a small piece of the transfer. I'm just going to line it up where I need it. I've already pulled back some of the paper. And we're just going to go ahead and adhere that down. Pull it off and seal it. And that one's all fixed. All fixed like it never happened. Now let's take a look at what it looked like before. So we have this piece all finished. I think it looks fabulous. I have used a lot of silver on this piece because I use a lot of gold and I thought let's do a change let's change it up the Harlequin transfer it looks great on here 
I think it's a very edgy piece and I think somebody will absolutely love it. It can go glam, it can go goth, it's just whatever you want it to be. The stripes turned out absolutely beautiful. A little bit of bling on it with the the new handles. The drawers have been lined with a beautiful William Morris paper. I've also done a beautiful Art Deco design on the sides of all the drawers. On the moldings, what we did is we put black on them, then we put the silver on them. I showed you how to do that. Put silver uh, rub and buff on the edges also, just to give it a nice profile. We also had a stool to go with this. Took the veneer off of it, went ahead and painted it the same black that is on the piece. Added a little bit of rub and buff along the edges. And I think somebody will really love this piece. If you enjoyed the content, please remember hit that like and subscribe button. We'll see you in the next video.